So I don't even like going down in the details like this when it comes to music because I feel like it's just something that we should all just enjoy and just have fun experiencing. And we don't really have to go into the details like that, but I feel like I have to with this album just because I love it so much. And yeah, I do think it's become a little overrated. I don't think this will become a classic, but it's great to see Pusha T drop an album and get the attention that it did and the reception that it did and have an impact the way it did. And the fact that people want to downplay it and say it's not an album doesn't really make a lot of sense to me. And I feel like it's mostly due to the fact that there's been so many samples throughout hip-hop that define the fact of what an ep or a mixtape or an album is i feel like the line in between all of those labels is just so fucking thin that at this point it's only the perception that really signifies the difference between the two the way the fans perceive an ep or a mixtape or an album i feel like an album is looked upon as this is your actual final product this isn't like a little side mixtape or a little ep that you just want to give us drop of music this is your definitive album but there are also definitive mix tapes that really impact like the discography of an artist but i feel like when an artist wants to put it out and say this is my album i feel like it's just the true the true final product and the return they want to make back when actually giving music back to their fans so due to the fact that isaiah rashad's sylvia demo is an ep and it's 14 tracks long and the greatest album of all time has 10 tracks and really only nine since the genesis is a skit i feel like there really shouldn't be that much of a negative connotation when placing something as this isn't an album I feel like no matter how long or how short it is, it should still be perceived as an album if it is that the artist is comfortable enough calling it that. I feel like, again, with the line being so thin between all the three labels, I feel like an artist calls it a mixtape if they feel like it's not being as serious. If, like, they're trying to announce something new or they just want to simply give back music. When it's called an album, this is your definitive final product. And I feel like that's what Pusha T gave us with Daytona because I do think it's his greatest record to date. And he waited almost four years to give you seven tracks with those seven tracks alone kept you listening to the music and i feel like that's what i want quality over quantity and to me yeah i would prefer a long consistent album but it's very hard to do that and now we're stuck in such a stream age where so many artists are dropping 18 24 20 track albums that i feel if you make short consistent records they can have so much more impact and so much more replay value than a long ass album that has a lot of filler the album experience doesn't feel as good when it is 24 tracks where seven of them are straight trash and 10 of them are really good then just a 10 track album of just constant highs that just keep you on the same level throughout i feel like that's such a more memorable experience when listening to an album so the argument is boiled down to two sides either there aren't enough songs or the album itself just doesn't have a long enough runtime and i feel like both sides can be picked apart pretty easily i feel like with a long run time first of all when some rap when some rap songs came out and it was 24 minutes long people did talk about it being short but it was never not labeled an album it was never labeled as oh this is too short and again it being too short can be a gripe within the album experience experience you can listen to something and be like damn i feel like this is too short but it sh still shouldn't be taken away from the fact that it is an album personally for me the reason why i love daytona so much is the fact that even though it is just seven songs those seven songs feel like an entire album he did something there that not a lot of artists would have done with just seven songs and i feel like that's why it's so special same thing with excess sensation 17 even though that's a trash ass album people never said oh this is an album or this is just way too short they still listen to the music and just took it for what it was and still labeled it an album because they knew this is the final product that X wanted to give us when he put out his studio album. The same thing that Pusha T wanted to do here. And then you can speak on the amount of songs that there is on the record, which again, like Illmatic, there are only nine tracks. Illmatic is so important because it just shows you what short albums can do. Paid in Full, one of the most important, influential, and I would easily say top 10 most important rap record ever. Rock King was only rapping on seven of those motherfuckers. So basically people are saying, oh, it's 21 minutes, it's seven tracks. But if Kanye laid two or three instrumentals in between the tracks like bad bad not good and ghostface did with their collab album then this would have been perfectly fine i feel like the arguments are just so weak at the end of the day pusha t is still giving you seven hard ass tracks that are very cutting edge with a great level of rapping amazing production and people just want to lay it down and say oh this isn't an album after complaining for so long that we get way too many long albums like when you finally get short albums and you get this sort of wave of artists dropping short ass albums people just start to complain and i feel like these seven songs i'm gonna bump them all the way until pusha t drops his next record so i don't see how this is a problem at all this is almost as stupid to me as the people that think the love below is in a solo under 3000 record like not only is that album so different from anything outcast has done or anything big boy has done it is 18 tracks over an hour of material completely different completely cutting edge 
boundary pushing experimental music and people just are so stuck with these labels that they're like oh this isn't an album this isn't a solo record and i'm like you're making no fucking sense and you're so stuck between behind these labels and you're kind of degrading the music when you're saying it's not an album or it's not this and it just feels like an album as great as daytona should be remembered and like this whole it's not an album tag just like kind of degrades it a little bit even classic velvet underground records were four or five tracks long like i think their second record was only four to five tracks and it's still a fucking amazing album and even the early daughters records like canada songs it was 10 tracks in 11 minutes and it's still a great, intense listening experience that shouldn't be taken down just because it's short or anything. It's still an album, and it's still fucking great. And I think that's the way the music should be perceived. So yeah, that's all I gotta say. Please like, please subscribe. I'll be back soon. I think I'm gonna do like a top 10 on The Cure pretty soon. But yeah, thank you for watching. Like, subscribe, and I'll be back very soon.